Hello everyone, I'm Mitchell Ryan Darcy and welcome to Just Watch This, where I uh, do a before and after review of something I've never seen before. And today, you know, I, I know the world's going to shit and in terms of entertainment, for some reason I've been craving something crazy and something out of this world i decided on a nicholas cage double feature of mandy and color out of space i figured that's a very good choice uh, for a double feature uh from what i've heard because uh well I've, I've never actually seen the films but i've heard mandy's great and i heard color out of space is great Check in the description for a chapter selection, so that way you can, if you only want to see one review and not the other, if you want to see it non-spoiler and spoiler, just check in the description. There should be a chapter selection uh, available. You just click on the time code or the, go to the, skip ahead to the time code that you want to watch, you know? Before we get into my before review, um, I just want to give a little quick update and just say with my pandemic hair and all that i've decided you know not to shave and all that and just to see what happens tomorrow i'm gonna actually trim just my mustache because i am kind of tired of it going into my mouth <laughs> and it's gross it's unsanitary and especially with eating it's 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 i'm fighting hair but i'm still not touching my hair i'm not touching my beard and i'm not touching whatever the hell this little thing is i guess people call that a goatee or whatever like I, where is this gonna go like is it gonna go down is it gonna connect is my beard gonna turn i don't know we'll find out by the end of this pandemic so i just wanted to give that very quick and unnecessary piece of information so there we go we got mandy and then ended off with color out of space I'm super excited to watch these. As you can see, just from the cover, they both sort of have a reddish, purple, purplish, pinkish tinge. So I thought these would make a good, uh, <laughs> good double feature. And uh, the fact that you know, I think this is the Mandy came out just recently. I think it was like what 2017. And I think Color Out of Space was uh, this year, this year or 2019. So. It's pre pro pretty recent Nicolas Cage films. Mandy, I'm under the impression, is a, like a, a revenge thriller type thing. Like sort of like John Wick, you know, uh, something bad happens. And I think he goes after the people, the criminals or that wrong them, wrong him. And uh, Color Out of Space is a adaptation of a H.P. Lovecraft story. So... I don't know what the hell I'm going to get into with that movie, but I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to assume Mandy's a little more action-orientated, where Color Out of Space is a little more, I guess, drama. That's why I guess going into it. Uh, Nicolas Cage has always been fun to watch as a performer. He always, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, he usually always gives 100%. 110% into everything, 120%, 150, let's, let's say he puts 200% into everything, you know, I've seen, you know, a, de a decent selection of Nicolas Cage films, I haven't seen them all, but I'm very slowly, uh, collecting them all, or trying to, uh, but from what I've heard, this is the more critically claimed part of his, uh, uh, later on career, or, present day career i guess because uh, you know he was big in the 90s and then you know he he did a couple like um uh, like from what i've heard dying of the light i heard is very very bad but nicholas cage is still the highlight of the film sort of thing but this is sort of like in this is more of an upswing of his career i believe uh, once again, the problem with watching movies back to back is generally you find if you're going to compare something, you're definitely going to compare to what you just watched. So I feel like Color Out of Space, I will probably do some comparisons to Mandy, but I'm going to do my best to avoid that and try to review it as its own thing. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below if you think this is actually a great double feature that <laughs> I'm trying out. Time to watch. Mandy.
Well, I just watched Mandy and uh, non spoiler review. Wow. <laughs> this was a. This was crazy. This was mad. Um, a bit of a slow burn. Uh, but if you're holding out for violence and gore, <laughs> I think uh, I think this movie will pay off for you if you uh, hold through it. Looked beautiful. <laughs> uh, I love the color changes. I I don't know if that was done in post or it was probably more post, but um, I don't know if maybe maybe because I know I could see some of it being shot, like for example the flashing light scenes and stuff like that. I could see that being done on set. But some of the color changes, I feel like, is uh, uh, definitely was post. But I, I could be wrong. But I thought it was great. And for once, I was thinking Nick and Nicholas Cage is like, because it was like, you know, first half of the movie. I'm like, I'm like, there's, they're, they're not really giving Nicholas Cage a lot to do. But, um, but the little scenes where he does, um, he. <laughs> Like that that bathroom scene after oh man oh yeah that's right non spoiler non spoiler uh I mean bathroom scene's not exactly a spoiler I'm not saying what happens in the bathroom scene I'm just saying there's a bathroom scene as it's very emotional Mandy is great crazy somewhat brutal <laughs> depending on the moment um very. There's a lot of moments where I'm just like, this is great. Nightmare inducing, not nightmare visually, but just very unsettling. Unsettling. That's the word I was looking for. Like very nightmare unsettling. <laughs> the beginning of a nightmare and very psychedelic uh, in some of the places that it goes. It is like the lighthouse. I would I would definitely recommend that this movie's not for everybody. Uh, if you're a fan of, like, Nicolas Cage and, uh, I don't know, in some sort of drama or whatever, uh, or more grounded films, I think this film will be a little hard for you to swallow. Yeah, very violent, somewhat a lot of duty. Uh, this is, this would have been a great film to watch at, like, one or two o'clock in the morning, like, after staying up for a long time. Like, this is definitely a great midnight like madness type film i liked it for what it was and i didn't really have a problem with the film the film just wanted to be what it was and it was and uh i was a little bit worried in the beginning i'm like oh this is not going to be as uh crazy as i as i thought it was going to be but boy does the crazy ramp up <laughs> a couple scenes where i'm not i actually wasn't even sure what was happening uh, are specifically the moment why he's here, why he's there, why is that happening? Uh, can't really say anything about the spoilers, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, but it's spoiler territory for Mandy. Uh, I mean, it's not really spoiler. But let's start off light. But uh, I love that they used the King Crimson song in the beginning of the film. The score, like, um, I think that's uh, yeah, because they I saw the end credits in memoriam in memory of uh. Uh, Johan jo Jo's uh, hold on Johan Johansson he did some very great scores Um, I especially love his score for uh, Prisoners with Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, uh, Hugh Jackman um, and then this movie um, though I'm not entirely sure I, I guess I guess yeah 90% of that that was that was his score or whatnot um but it was a very trippy movie in some in some cases, and the music uh, just was uh, the music didn't didn't fully add to it, but it matched the film. I felt, and uh, it's unfortunate we uh, lost him so early on. I mean, uh, the films he could have done score wise later on, who knows? Anyways. Um, <laughs> Nicholas Cage is great as always uh the scene that really I was like yeah there's the Nicholas Cage I know is the bathroom scene where right after uh because what happens story-wise is basically uh, I assume their husband and wife living in a remote sort of section in the mountains and um while she was walking a trail one day um the van passed them and the van was the cult lead 
cult leader and their Mary cult. I've um, which actually brings me to the point of the titles. The main the titles I love absolutely love uh like because the title i forget it was like the first one was like smoky mountain 1983 and it was the date there was the title for the uh children of the dawn <laughs> forget the specific wording but it was it was very nice looking titles nice font design um love that so she's walking along and then the cult leader just happens to glance at her so it's like you know, when he's back at the place thinking about her, he's like, oh, I want her. Kidnap her. Cult followers uh, summon, or not, I don't know if summon's the right word, these ba- biker demons from hell. I don't know what the hell they are, <laughs> but they are... Uh, that was the first big crazy step this movie definitely took. Um, whatever the hell those things are, take her. And I guess they try to... Uh, join her into the call or whatever but you know she offends him uh the cult leader so the cult leader you know burns her alive in front of nicholas cage who's tied up in barbed wire and it's it's very brutal but it's um it's the starting point for the violent rage that nicholas cage is gonna go through as he um tracks them down and kills all those who cause this simple down to the point revenge plot thing i actually thought at first i'm like oh i guess this is not a revenge plot thing because they just wanted to kidnap her but yeah no they 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 went the john wick route they uh killed the dog but instead of the dog it's it's (laughs) the wife the chainsaw fight scene was great absolutely great and i think um granted i know texas chainsaw massacre 2 was in was it was that the eighties that movie came out or seventies one with Dennis Hopper? Uh, there was a chainsaw fight in that scene, in that in that movie, and um, it was really comedic. I felt, especially considering what the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre was, um, and then in this movie, the chainsaw fight was that that is the best chainsaw fight I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> absolutely and uh i love the cinematography of the 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 church like it's such a little random um little moment but it's like i assume they built that whole sort of church just so they could burn it down later on in the film and so it's like very gory effects very um like the part where um and then goes Cage cuts one of the, the bikers from hell. I call them the bikers from hell. I don't know what they were actually called. Oh, yeah, I think they were called Black Skulls in this movie or something like that. But when he cut the throat and it just started pouring on him, I was like, wow, this is Nicolas Cage in the Evil Dead type movie. <laughs> but, yeah, very great. And I wonder, one of the producers I saw a name was Elijah Wood. And that's not, that can't be the same Elijah Wood that was in Lord of the Rings, right? All right, then. Keep your secrets. This is what happens when you don't look up anything. You just, you know, review what you've seen. And that's what I saw. And uh, overall, I enjoyed the film. It was definitely a standout uh, Nicolas Cage film. Very, uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess this would be technically Grindhouse in a sense. Not my favorite Nicolas Cage movie but it's definitely it's definitely something creepy there was a lot of cool editing moments in this film I gotta say like when the cult leader is talking directly to uh, Mandy uh, it's uh, the fade ins and out between it because it's dead on the cult leader's face and then it sort of turns into her face I think was like was a spot on editing i've never seen a i'm pretty sure that's a fade that makes that effect or some sort of wipe but it's done so well and it does it a couple of times and it's a long scene too there was a lot of takes in this movie that appear to be done almost one take in a sense uh like the bathroom scene when nicholas cage and you know he's drinking the alcohol and he doesn't know what to do there's a lot of great moments in mandy and i'm really glad i got this on (laughs) blu-ray now i can relive this movie whatever i want but anyways moving on i'm about to watch the color out of space i hope i made a good choice for having this as the second movie i kind of feel like this is going to be almost like a kill bill volume one volume two type situation where like the first one it's like all more violent more action more 
more crazy and then the the second one is going to be a little more i i feel like it's going to be more of a drama type movie but then again i've never really read any of hp lovecraft's uh any of his novels or short stories or that uh i think he I, was he the one with the cthulhu uh story thing or whatever uh creatures you know i don't know alien tentacles and mystic arts or i i don't know i'm kind of excited to jump into color out of space and see what uh see what this movie brings to the table and uh hopefully it's an out of this world experience i can't wait time to watch color out of space i just watched color out of space and hp lovecraft um adaptation starring Nicolas Cage and um I think this is the first time first uh first HP Lovecraft adaptation I've ever saw because I can't honestly think of any other movies that are actually based on one of his short stories or stories um but I will say uh this movie was definitely some sort of experience actually kind of <laughs> this movie kind of makes uh, mandy actually look sane <laughs> a bit um in all honesty i i didn't think it would turn out the way it did but then now that i've seen it i'm like what else was i expecting from a film like this like it feels to me like a very discounted um mashup of various horror films um it seems to me like it's a very heavily influenced by like uh, Poltergeist, um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, The Thing, uh, The Shining. Uh, specifically, there's one part where Nicolas Cage sort of freaks out at the daughter swearing, and it just seems a little bit out of field, left out of left field, and uh, it just reminded me of the working scene from The Shining where it was like. Wendy, when you come in here and break my concentration. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it seems like there's a lot of things that the people who made this movie was definitely, they loved. I could see those movies being a major influence on this film. Um, But at the same time, they kind of wanted to try and make it their own thing. But it just, I don't know, just watching it, I'm like, this is just a discount poltergeist this is just a discount like it it kind of felt like that discount horror film but it's for what it is um it was an okay film i don't think i'll ever watch this the only reason i would actually watch rewatch this film i think is if um if i actually researched more about hp lovecraft and his stories and specifically maybe if i read uh, the original short story that this movie is based on, um, then maybe this might have some rewatchability. I mean, granted, if there's one thing I should praise, praise about the movie other than Nicolas Cage, of course. Um, <laughs> actually, he's not the highlight of the film, surprisingly. Um, I would say it is when it seems like they did do practical effects um because there was moments of cgi and clear cgi but um uh there was a couple moments that felt practical enough like uh the uh, certain scene involving the alpaca and uh nicholas cage i wouldn't really recommend this film unless maybe you're a big hp lovecraft fan or Nicholas Cage fan, like a really big one, <laughs> then there might be just enough about this film to watch. Uh, Nicholas Cage's performance is so bad it's good. Yeah, so bad and it's good. Nicholas Cage's performance in uh, Color Out of Space is a lot more out of <laughs> space. <laughs> it's a, it's, 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 it's so weird. I don't know what I, I, it bothered me about this performance because for the first quarter of the film i was like okay yeah his character i can sort of see but every time that like he almost like switches back and forth even mid mid conversation i don't know if it's because 
of what's happening in the story or if there was some sort of influence that the the rock or meteor or whatever it is it's not a lot there's not a lot in this movie that's explained i kind of feel like it's um the my problem with a movie like this is like usually the good horror films they have uh i would say like a sense of of what the mechanics of what's happening per se like if it's a a slasher film it's like okay so it's this one person one entity that's going around killing people you know it's very simple and it stays to that when there's you're dealing with supernatural element or entity it sticks to a certain thing that if you don't know the information it may seem random but it's actually not um case in point the shining uh but uh color out of space it seemed for me especially on a first viewing the purple pink uh the color that cannot be described uh <laughs> which i will applaud i mean if you're going to do a movie that where the whole premise is sort of like oh it's a color that doesn't exist um it's kind of hard to adapt that to film or television so i kind of give praise for the uh the choices in the way they went around it uh, and it sort of did like a pinkish purple feel um color i mean that's how i describe it maybe maybe it is a truly a color out of this world <laughs> or out of space but yeah so the entity in this or whatever that's causing this or exactly what it is i don't know it seemed random in the way it did stuff like sometimes the characters will be hallucinating sometimes they'll be uh um uh it will you know when it chooses to take a character it does it differently than the other times and it just it seems random and i it seems to me that's sort of the horror of this is like oh it's relying too hard on it being a random entity doing what the script needs at the right time where i usually find a better horror film usually it seems random but it's actually not in this movie it seems random per se and i i still know behind it <laughs> i don't know if i'm am i communicating this right let me know in the comments below but that's what i sort of got when i watched this film uh spoiler alert yeah though spoiler yeah the the alpaca scene with the shooting of the alpaca and the alpaca is turned into that mishmash of the mishmash of like the thing only a little more lower budget and a little more i think it's uh i think it's a little more comedic i felt especially with nick cage with the shotgun and he's like ah! i was kind of hoping a little better from color color out of space but for what it, what it was it was okay and the the ending it kind of felt like it, it sort of had a point not sure what the point was i think it was lost on me but the um i've from what i understood of of hv lovecraft is uh his stuff usually revolves around one specific thing and that's madness and humanity and madness and mind and I, I'm going to be judging all future H.P. Lovecraft films that I see uh, basically with this film and see how similar it is and all that. But um, but yeah, man, I don't want to compare, but if I had to, man, Mandy is, is a much better film than Color Out of Space. A couple of great freakout moments by Nicolas Cage, but once again, I just don't know. Like, he does a little voice thing. And when he switches into it, I'm like, I'm like, I've, I've sort of heard the style before. Like I've seen Nicolas Cage do better versions of what happens in this film, uh, whatever, if it's freak outs or just the way of going around it. I'm, I'm not in any rush to see, uh, out of color, out of space ever again. What does it mean? What does it mean? Oh, that reminds me. I gotta, I gotta try and track down, uh, the Wicker Man, both the original and the remake, um, I don't know which one I would watch first, though. Um, but I really am looking forward to uh, Nicolas Cage's performance in that. Um, just from the clips I've seen. Not the bass! Not the bass! Anyways, I want to know what you guys think of Mandy and uh, Color Out of Space. Let me know in the comments below or wherever the comments are. I don't know. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I want you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this have a nice whatever check out my other stuff it's entirely up to you no pressure this this video is okay 
I, I kind of like the stuff I did in that video. Um, I would feel I would feel like this one is one of my better videos, but um, it's entirely up to you if you want to see it. Don't don't click that one.